Route 44 is back, and this year we're headed to a completely different state. Guess what? The city is also the home of Superman. Come along with us for Route 44, season three. Driving through, my initial reaction was, oh, what a cute town. Mm -hmm. But you said, not always the case. No, we've really invested in Metropolis in the last three years. Uh, you know, Market Street is a huge commerce area for us. It's always historically been a commerce area. This used to be the area, you know, before the interstates came in and before the bridges came in to get over to Kentucky, Metropolis was really a booming town for clothes and uh, attire, anything that you needed, you could find here. It had a five and dime, it had everything, and it was mostly centered on Market Street. However, with the development of interstates and different areas around us, Market Street kind of took a hit. So what we did was about three years ago, the tourism uh, side of things, the GMCVB, along with the city of Metropolis partnered together to be able to offer business owners uh, grants to do improvements on the facades and insides of their buildings. We seen it from a CVB standpoint, from a tourism standpoint, that that is a great investment for us because we're getting people here and we want to get them out into the community and see you know, what there is to offer and what they can do and extend their stay. And Market Street does look awesome. That was the first place we hit and I just had to hold my breath. I was like, oh, yeah. look at that shop. No, look at that shop. Look at that shop. Oh my gosh, this place has way more than I thought it did. It does. It has a lot of local investment. Almost everybody on Market Street either grew up here or have lived here for decades. And they have taken that love and that passion for this town and put it back into their businesses. So we have a lot of cute boutiques. Of course, we have the Super Museum that, you know, you couldn't have Metropolis without something Superman related in it. It is a great place to visit. And what I love is now that Metropolis has bounced back in such a big way, that when you come to any of these events, you also have shopping, food, yes. just about anything you could want from a stop on the road. Yes, and we have very unique places as well. We do have the first lighthouse among the Ohio River. I, I saw that. Uh, yeah, so that and that's built as a tribute to cancer fighters and cancer survivors. So, and of course, those in memory of those that have lost their battle with cancer. So that is a very special uh, landmark that we have here in Metropolis as well. I love that you can step back in time when you come to Metropolis, mm -hmm. but you can also eat, shop, stay and gamble yeah. just about any activity you could find to do it's here absolutely it is i mean there are you can make a day out of it or you can make a weekend out of it or you can stay for an entire event it doesn't matter we can offer everything uh just about fit every taste bud every shopping experience that you would want and all the fun that a family would need for an entire weekend in metropolis i believe you it's the hometown of one of the most beloved superheroes. So, of course he has his own museum, duh, right? That's right, Superman Museum in Metropolis, Illinois, at supermanmuseum.com, Facebook, Twitter, all the good stuff, that's where you can find us. And what's in here? Superman. Superman. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's everything Superman. There's uh, costumes, props from the movies, TV shows, original artwork, animation cells, toys from the 30s up through now, model kits, hard to find collectibles, one of a kinds, personal effects of the people who created Superman. Anything you can think of, you can name it, it's in here. It's here, how, what's the square footage of this store? Uh, the building, each floor is about 6,000 square feet. So no wonder, because I'm walking through here in, in 20 minutes, I feel like I it's haven't like a even. Maze. Yeah, and I haven't seen 10% of it. Oh, well, we have about 10% on display. You know, you never know what you'll find. There's always a story behind every item. Oh my gosh, you're killing me with this. Yeah, so when you see like, yeah, it's so this floor to ceiling, it. no. There's you're nowhere to put it. <laughs> <laughs> you're separated into different sections. Tell us a little bit about the each, each of the sections. Well, the different eras of Superman. Mm -hmm. Like right now we're kind of like in the, uh, like this side's the Metropolis area mm -hmm. where it's done, been home of Superman since 72. But yeah. This is the Metropolis section. And then over here is some art section. There's original comic board art, and then there's overlays for like the, the artwork that sits on like puzzles and stuff. They have the, you know, the, the cells for all that that overlays it. And then back over here is a portion of the Adventures of Superman with George Reeves. Mm -hmm. That was, we probably have more of that than anything else because that's who Jim grew up with. His Superman was George Reeves. That's 
on TV every day. Right. You know, so we got his costumes and then there's statues and personal effects and then there's more of it over there and it's split, you know, you gotta, it's just so we can only fit so much, so. And there were so many different incarnations of Superman, so you guys try to make sure that you cover all the bases. Yeah, You've got them from beginning Reeves, to end. Superman the movie section, there's the animated stuff, Kirk Allen all the way back in 1948, we got his stuff. I mean, there's Lois and Clark, there's Smallville, there's Supergirl, there's... <laughs> all the way from today back to the OG Superman. It's the 80th year of Superman this year, so. It doesn't That's a like lot of stuff to make in 80 years. What's the thing that somebody goes, <gasps> because... Uh, the costumes. That's, you know, that's the big thing that everybody comes to see. You know, other than Christopher Reeve costumes, you got Dean Cain's costume. There's Kirk Allen's costume. You know, it's... Dean Cain is Superman. He's still my beating <laughs> Terry heart. Hatcher's wedding dress is in there from... No way! Yep, from the Lois and Clark. So all you Terry Hatcher fans, you can see that. And then... There's the you know jackets he wore, stuff she wore. I mean, it's it seems like it's never ending. What I think is cool is whether you like Superman or is totally into Superman or not, you're still gonna love this. You can place appreciate cause it. Cause, it's you a know, rich part of our history. He's yeah. been around for 80 He's, years. Uh, superheroes are American mythology, mm -hmm. is what they say. Exactly. So I mean, that's our we go to it like that's our inspiration. It's history. It is. It's a great history. It's 80 years of Superman and growing. <laughs> that's right. I forget that he's not gonna die anytime soon. We could have spent all day at the Super Museum and not seen everything they had to offer, but we got another place to head to. And when you're in Metropolis, stop and get food at one of the many restaurants we're at just like Mama's Home Cooking. This, isn't it beautiful? This is their Mama's Famous Fried Barbecue Chicken Sandwich. I cannot wait to try this. It's fried chicken breast with their special spice, comes with their homemade coleslaw on a toasted Hawaiian bun with Cajun fries, and together that's just $6.99. And do you see how big this is in comparison to, to my hands? $6.99. That smells spicy and delicious. Oh my gosh, whatever they put on that chicken is the best thing I've ever had in my entire life. And the slaw? Gives it just a sweet edge, so the spice doesn't just kick you right in the teeth. It's just nice and subtle, very smoky barbecue flavor. Oh my gosh, I'm eating the whole thing. When I say the chicken sandwich at Just Like Mama's Home Cooking was the best I've ever had, I got backup. Behind the scenes, the guys ate them too. No more time for food though. We have so much more to do today. They call it the Key West of the Midwest, and it's where you can dive in first class. Tell us about Marmette Springs. I love to do that. Hopefully there's a lot of reasons people say things like that and I really appreciate the positive comments. Um, we started this facility about a little longer than 21 years ago and my background is I started my diving career on our state police dive team so professionalism is very important to me. When we opened this facility my goal was not to be another dive destination. My goal was to raise the bar and set the standard for what diving could be in the Midwest. How do you do that? Well, there's a lot of things that go into that. <laughs> Below the water, there's so many sights and things to see. It's a virtual underwater amusement park. There are training platforms set up for the instructors. There's rope lines that connect all the sites to ensure people's safety so the new divers can follow each other. You know, it's a rock quarry. It's an amazing place to dive, and we know we're not the Grand Cayman, but it's still pretty spectacular. And in order to make it a destination, you've taken a bunch of crazy things and dropped them in the water so people can explore them. One of them is an airplane. Get it? Dive in first class? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the big draw, and we're so fortunate, we, uh, Warner Brothers actually filmed U.S. Marshals with Tommy Lee Jones and Wesley Snipes in this area in the late 90s. Okay. So the long and short of it is we ended up purchasing a 727 passenger jet from Warner Brothers for $1. We wrote them the check and they cashed it. <laughs> and so we bought a 727 for a dollar. That was the easy part. And the other part was getting it in. And that was a labor of love. That was a lot of work, but it was pretty spectacular. We actually put it in the water right next to where we're seated right now, floated it on the surface, and it's uh, found its final home behind us. The tail of it's at 15 feet, the nose is at 45 feet, and divers from all over the world have came here to visit and dive on it. And it's like an urban jungle underneath there. It's not just an airplane. Right. Well, 
Unfortunately, we don't have a Caribbean reef structure here, so we have to put things in the water that bring the fish in and divers to see. And as soon as it's below the water, it's cool. So how many people lived in rural areas in this area rode a school bus to school? Well, I did when I was young, and to swim through a school bus, it's a lot more fun than riding to school. Oh, I bet. And so we've got a train car, we've got a fire truck, we've got an ambulance, a semi truck, there's a suspended Cessna airplane midwater. There's just boats that are sunk. There's all kinds of things in there that are fun to see. It's a diving adventure. Absolutely it is. And then what's special about this place, aside from that, you guys have specialty courses. There's a lot of training opportunities, and we do train a lot. We train for beginning open water, from the person who walks in the door that says, you know, what does it mean to be a scuba diver? Two-thirds of the world is covered with water. When you get your license to dive, you get to see and explore the rest. And the question is, where do you go from there? We have training every week, every weekend here. We're open year round and you can take specialty classes. And our goal for most of our divers is to work their way to a master diver rating. I wanna talk a little bit more about what it's like to dive through this like urban jungle. I think it's just breathtaking because it offers a very different type of diving than the Caribbean because you actually can't see 100 feet. You may say 15, 20, 30, 40 feet, but things just, it's like they come out of the mist and they appear in front of you and you're just following a rope line and next thing you see may be the front of a Boeing 727. And I always tell people the best way I can explain how it feels under there, everyone has seen people in outer space, how they're floating weightless. It's one of the most spectacular things about diving is you're, you're weightless. You don't weigh anything under there. So it's just like being an astronaut. It's probably as close as most people will ever be to being in outer space. Imagine it, scuba diving in an underwater urban jungle. So cool, but we're going someplace else cool next, of course. This store caught my eye from across the street. No joke. I walked over to look in the windows. Just the most sophisticated, elegant, and yet eclectic looking boutique I think I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, I love this place. Well, we, we carry a lot of um, home decor, gourmet foods, candles, boutique clothing, and we have it in size small all the way to 3XL. We like to carry things that are different and unique. And uh, we try to do things for all of our different customers to make them comfortable. You said you even will go look at their Facebook pages to see what they like when you go shopping. Yeah, um, we, we used to, when I first started, um, I would only buy things that were for myself and uh, that what I liked. And I thought, that that's not going to work because not everyone likes my style. So I like to look at all the different styles for young and old. And that way, if I look at the different styles that different people are wearing, then I can see what they like. And that when I go to shop and stuff, I can find different styles that everyone likes. The second you walk in, it's instantly obvious to anyone that has eyes that this is not just stuff you have wholesale shopped for. You have carefully curated a wonderful collection inside of this store. The, the one thing we've always did is we always have depended on God for everything. Um, we put all of our faith in God and then after that we, uh, we, we definitely take our time and we don't just buy stuff. We absolutely choose things wisely. Um, if, if we go to market, we take time to find the right items. Um, it has to fit our, fit our shop. Um, we like stuff that's different and unique. We don't just want it, just the normal things. You know, the same we, thing that everybody yeah, else yeah, has. Yeah, we want it to stand out. We want um, people to really come in here and get a different feel for things. We, we want it to be different and unique. And it is. I just love the way it looks in here. It's like you took all of the best style techniques, like farmhouse charm, except it's not too shabby chic. Right. You've got sophisticated, except for it's not stuffy. And then you've got eclectic, but not weird. Right. It's the most amazing style. How did you develop that? My daughter and I, we've come in and uh, we go to market. We choose things. Um, we like to take things that are vintage and new and mix them together and uh, we just pray that God keeps blessing us and we can keep doing it. I love it. Wasn't Six and Vintage super neat? It was, but no more time for shopping. We have other things to do. There's an old saying that ice cream is always a good idea. I agree with that and I bet you do too. Absolutely. There are so many flavors that you have 44 flavors? 44. 
and it's all artisan ice cream. So I know what artisan is, but maybe they don't. Okay, so artisan just means that it's hand churned. Um, so like we said, we do 44 different flavors. We carry nine different flavors at a time and just kind of switch that out, you know, every couple days or so. What are some of the flavors? Because I did taste, what was the strawberry called? Strawberry sorbet? Strawberry sorbet. It's such a deep, rich color that you can tell that it's fresh and then it hits your mouth and it was like frozen strawberries mashed up and the other <laughs> flavors are... So we have like, we have a pecan pie um, that has a whole pecan pie in it. We do a blueberry cheesecake that has a whole blueberry cheesecake in it as well. Um, some of the most popular ones, we have a red velvet, a Mississippi mud that's chocolate and marshmallow, so. And you have a cake batter and the salted caramel. But this shop is more than ice cream. You also have tons of candies and then you're a bakery. We you are. bake everything fresh. We do, we do. We do um, cookies. So we try to carry at least six cookies varieties each day. Um, we do cakes and cupcakes and pies. And you have two choices here. You can get your coffee at the gas station where it's probably a little gross or you can get really nice, rich coffee here and a bunch of different varieties. So we have what we call a Honduran blend. So it comes from Honduras. It's a medium roast coffee. Um, we can do lattes, mochas. We do cappuccinos, macchiatos, iced or hot. And you have a bunch of different things to squirt in there too. We do, lots of, we carry, um, I think, nine or 10 different syrups each day. Um, and then of course our mochas, we can do chocolate, white chocolate or caramel. Behind the scenes, you know we tried every flavor, and not just to cool off, but because they were delicious. And now, it's time to find somewhere else cool. Let's go. Bike trails, boating, camping, skiing, disc golf. What can you not do here? You can do almost anything at Fort Mass Hextech Park. It uh, seems like it. Uh, we, have all, for, we have something for just about everybody here. And I hear you have one of the most amazing bike trails in the area. We do. We have a great bike trail. Uh, it's uh, the entire bike trail is like 9.2 miles, but on the park itself is 4.2. And we have the largest pedestrian bridge along this trail in the state of Illinois, 440 feet long. And there's so much wildlife around here. Just walking outside, I saw a great blue heron. Is that what you call them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's several rookeries around here, which means where they nest at. Uh, we have all types of, uh, since we're along the Ohio River, of course, we have all types of, uh, of birds in this area. But yes, this is, we're, Southern Illinois is rich with wildlife. And it's not like you're leaving town and traveling 20 miles to get to the woods, you're right. right here. We're the only state park that is actually within the uh, confines of a city. This was Illinois' first state park, which is amazing, but even more amazing that layered in history is that fort. It went up it was abandoned and went down. It went up, it was abandoned and got burnt down. Correct. It went up, was abandoned and went down because correct. it wasn't, this isn't a prime real estate here except during the wars. No, and that's correct. I mean, we didn't have huge armies stationed here or anything. They basically guarded the waterways and it was, uh, they wanted to make sure that they had commerce going throughout the wars. And so that's what this area was used for. And the last one was dismantled by the townspeople, right? Used for wood. Yes, it was used for wood. Everything from, from uh, of course, powering ships and different things, or boats that were coming through here to burning for um, heat. So why why was it decided to put up this replica oh, of this fort? Oh, okay. Well, anytime you can teach history and you can have a tangible lesson for history where we can walk kids around it and walk them through it and teach people about the history of this country is a very good thing. And you touched history. This place is just layered and layered in history. There were the Spanish, the Native Americans, the British, British the, the French, French yes. all rolled through here. And one of the ways you guys celebrate that is a three day long reenactment, but get this, it's not Civil War reenactment. No, it's the, uh, we depict the battle of late 1700s, early 1800s. And even though there wasn't a battle actually held on the site, we're trying to replicate that battle. And uh, we, it's the largest, one of the largest events that DNR puts on in the state. We usually have about 200,000 people for those three days. Everything that we do is period correct. Everything from the food to the stitching on their clothing. And 
the Native American history is very rich here. When you walk in the front door, you have an entire two walls of arrowheads, authentic spears, shovels, hoes, things I've never seen before. Yes, we have all kinds of artifacts here, uh, a very large collection of artifacts that were donated by two different uh, families. Uh, matter of fact, uh, some, we've got more artifacts here of certain types than even our state museum's got. And the quality is amazing. And that's because the Native American heritage in this area is very, it's very... It's very strong, yes. Didn't Fort Massac look cool? Because it totally was. Where are we off to next? Stay tuned. You walk in, you step back in time. There's so many cool things that remind me of my childhood or things my parents talked about, things that I saw at my grandmother's house. It's just a smorgasbord of great stuff everywhere you look. Super City Antiques and Collectibles, we have a little bit of everything. Give me a taste of everything. Well, we have coins, we have antiques, we have kerosene lamps, we have Superman license plates. A wide selection changes all the time. We have vendors that bring in new stuff every day. So you always something new. And you can consign, which means that it's a new store every time you walk in. Right, because we don't know what we're going to get. We don't know when they're going to bring it. So you have to check online and every, in the store every day. The thing that I thought was the coolest is the amount of jewelry from all different eras, all different styles, including those crazy replica championship baseball, football. Those rings are just crazy to me. Yeah, one of our vendors bought them in Chicago and brought them down. And we've sold at least 18 of the Cubs, several Cardinals, Eagles, Green Bay. And that's what I love about this store. It actually has a big personality. It's very eclectic. It's very unusual. It's just, it's, it's like its own person. And we not only can sign and sell, but we also appraise. If somebody brings something in, wants it appraised, we appraise. So if you have something at home and you think it's worth a lot, you can tell them if it is or not. Or if you had something like, oh, my granny gave me this. And like, oh, surprise. Yeah, it can be worth more than you think or a lot less than you think. <laughs> but it's nice to know. Yeah, and we do that every day. People bring the stuff in. And occasionally, you might spot a celebrity or two in this store. We've had several celebrities. Uh, probably the best known would be the lead singer for the Smashing Pumpkins. And we're on road trip day three. If you go to the, the Smashing Pumpkins, mm -hmm. road trip day three. And you didn't even know it was him, did you? No, or I would have acted like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> but he bought stuff, didn't he? Oh, he did. I sold him Masonic items and other items. Neat. Well, they saw us on road trip day three because we knew they were filming. He told us they were filming. And we didn't know why, but uh, you can go to day three and see us cool. come right in the store. Had our business card up on the screen. And mm -hmm my funny voice selling him things and uh... and then the next day surprise <laughs> i'm a famous person you're the only place to get this very old school candy yes we have a wide variety we even have wax lips which is your favorite i understand and we also have <laughs> superman ice cream wonder woman ice cream and batman ice cream what does a batman ice cream taste like it's a dark chocolate yeah, with caramel. So it doesn't taste like bats? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Ozzy Osbourne, you know. <laughs> Isn't it awesome that Super City Antiques is like a new store every day? But we've got more traveling to do. It's on to the next place. This is hands down the coolest Chamber of Commerce <laughs> I've ever seen in my entire Thank life. You. Probably the only cool Chamber of Commerce. We like to think so. Yes, absolutely. So what's the story? Yes, so our Chamber of Commerce has been around pretty much since the beginning of the town, which was the 1800s. Um, so we were Metropolis before Superman ever existed, but back in 1972, DC Comics allowed us to actually take on the moniker of the official home of Superman. And so we've just taken it and ran with it, as you can see. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> totally Supermaned out in yes, here. Yes, absolutely. Lots of shields, lots of the man, of the man of Steel himself, lots of fun stuff. We have people coming in all the time from all over the world who just want to see the home of, home of Superman. The Superman statue 
is wildly popular. So popular that people actually get married there. Yes, we've had quite a few weddings. The other day I drove past and someone had their newborn child out with a felt board that said, I will do super things in this life, which was really sweet. Um, yes, it's very popular. You have people from all over the world that wanna come and see a 15 foot bronze statue of Superman himself. And you can buy just about any Superman related item in here. Yes, specifically anything that says Metropolis Illinois and has the shield on it, you can get here. And then of course we have the Super Museum across the street, which is a uh, small business. And they also have one of the world's largest collections and they have a lot of Superman memorabilia and souvenirs as well. And as you travel through town, you'll see a lot of the small businesses have embraced it. So they have cups and shirts and all sorts of fun things that you can pick up. Anything that has Superman on it that you can think of. We have it. Yeah, uh, there yes, you go. That's what it. I was gonna say. We've had trunks, which is a big, big subject this year because the red trunks are coming back in the comic books. We've had all sorts of things. We have some new ones that are coming out for the Superman celebration. We save a little bit of it back so that it's a new thing. So we got our design, our official design. We're really excited. So it'll be a fun year. She's teased it. So now we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> If you didn't know, there's this giant party and it's all for Superman. It's all about Superman. It's all about what he stands for. You'll see families coming here for four days in June and they've been coming year over year. We'll have every continent covered, every state, and they will be here for four days just eating up anything they can to celebrate Superman. We'll have food vendors and costume contests and entertainment. And then, of course, a lot of people come because of the celebrity guests that come. And then there's a ton of things going on during this event. There's bike rides, car shows. Yes, our local organizations, our United Way of Massac County, they work with the local high school and they put on an annual uh, Superman road race. It's actually their 30th year this year. So that kicks off festivities on Thursday evening. And then our local Kiwanis group has a bike ride as well, which goes to support their organization. Our Rotary Club puts on a super car show. And then there's a really cool super cruising event as well for people who just love Superman and want to drive around together. So it's not just walking around no. trying to spot Superman or buying right. Superman memorabilia. There are rides and amazing food, just like a huge fair almost. Yes, our, our, we, we're known for our family friendly event. So, you know, we have a kids area, which is called the Smallville area, which makes sense. Um, and they do their own costume contests and they can do superhero training and all sorts of fun things. But you can get great food here, everything from Filipino food to good old what I call good concession food, like the gyros and the funnel cakes and all of that fun stuff. Um, we have a really cool uh, truck coming this year, which is called Munchies, which is all gourmet grilled cheese, which I'm really pumped about. And then you can take your kids down to the carnival, which is at Dorothy Miller Park, and they can ride rides and hang out and just have a really fun time in Metropolis. I heard a rumor that I can be sworn in as an honorary citizen. You can, yes. So. You would come to the Chamber of Commerce, it's $20 to be sworn in, and you stand out with Superman himself, the statue, and our actual mayor, and you take an oath to be an honorary citizen of Metropolis, and you receive a certificate and some fun stuff, and you can tell anybody you want that you're now a citizen of Metropolis. Did you have fun in Metropolis? Because we sure did. Thanks for coming along with us on Route 44.